Christina, and I'm one of the first grade teachers at Lloyd. Welcome to my Jumbo classroom in my home. I am so excited to have you guys. The first grade team has been working really hard to come up with engaging lessons as well as activities we think the kids will enjoy. And this week, we are going to start off by creating paper mache projects. We are really excited about this, and we know that you guys will really enjoy this. Let's begin by learning a little bit about paper mache. I wanted to explain that paper mache is made out of composite material. Composite material means that it is made up of various materials. So this can be cut up newspaper, shredded paper, and paper mache actually originates from China, which were the creators of paper themselves. The Chinese began using paper mache to make helmets, which they were able to harden with lacquer. And here on the right hand side, I'm showing you guys a picture of a type of helmet that was created. So for this paper mache video, we are going to create our artwork with newspaper and a paste that we will create with a flour mixture, but that's getting way ahead of ourselves. I will share a few pictures of projects to help you get prepared for step one. For step one, the first thing we want to do is brainstorm what type of art form or project we are going to create. You can do this by creating a list of your ideas. I would recommend writing down about three to five ideas. The five ideas that I came up with are making a volcano, bracelets, creating a piggy bank, building a pinata, or creating a bowl. For step two, you're going to begin by searching for materials in your home and decide what you're going to build. I went around my house and found things that I could use for these projects. I found newspaper, a whole lot of packing paper, cardboard circles or cake rounds, a cereal box, and lots and lots of tape. Now we're ready to create a sketch of our project. I'm going to begin by drawing my cake round, which is going to be the base of my project. Next, I'm going to start drawing the cup that I'm going to put in the center of my cake round. Right here, I'm drawing the newspaper that I'm going to bunch up and wrap around the cup. I know it doesn't really look like newspaper, but I promise it is. Right here, I'm drawing all the tape that I'm going to use to tape down the newspaper that I'm wrapping around the cup. So if you, as you can see, I'm going to need a whole lot of tape. I've been, I've been thinking, I want you to be happier, I want you to be happier, when the morning comes, and we see what we've become, in the cold light of day we're aflame in the wind of the fire that we begun, every argument, every word we can't take back, cause with all that has happened I think that we both know the way that the story ends, there's only four Make sure that you cover your entire project in tape. This is going to help make it waterproof and help get the paper machine. Hi again. For step five, we're going to set up our workspace. I recommend that you set up an area like a large table and cut up a garbage bag and spread it 
it across your table before you go ahead and make your mixture because after you will make your mixture you can be ready to start. So we are going to start by making our paper mache mixture and you're going to want to change it to something that you can get dirty because we are going to make a mess. <laughs> okay, so you're going to need some flour, you're going to need some water, and you're going to need a large bowl to be able to go ahead and mix these ingredients. You can mix them with a spoon, a fork, or a whisk. To create our glue, we're going to need to pour flour into the bowl and add water. I didn't use precise measurements, I just went ahead and mixed and added water until it resembled a cake batter or a pancake batter. Now that you have your mixture prepared, you're going to need newspaper, your project, a tin to go ahead and put your paper cuttings in, maybe a paintbrush and some scissors. Go ahead and cut your newspaper into strips. These are the strips that you're going to layer on top of your volcano. Make sure you cut small and large strips so that you have two types to layer your project with. Go ahead and paint on the mixture or rub it in with your fingers. I usually like to massage it in. Once you cover it, it should look like this. For step six, depending on your project, you're going to want to add another layer. Make sure that you have let your project dry for at least 24 hours and that it is dry to the touch and looks white before you add a second layer. Adding the second layer helps your project be stronger and will help it last a little bit longer. I really recommend adding the second layer for the volcano because it is going to get wet. Continue layering your volcano with strips of newspaper. Make sure to cover it again, just like you did the first time. Also, when it is done, make sure you let it dry for 24 to 48 hours so that it is fully dry before you decide to paint it. Once your project is dry to the touch and white and you can knock on it and it makes a hollow sound, you know that it is ready to paint. You're going to need some paints, a paintbrush, and a place to put your paints. You can go ahead and get started. I'm going to use some black and some white and make some gray. I'll be adding some browns and some reds to it. When you finish painting your project, set it in an area to dry for 24 hours before you can add a second coat of paint. Depending on the project you are creating, you may want to add a second coat or different colors. In this part, I'm going to add some reds and some yellows and I'll be adding some more browns to give it some texture. Once you are done adding your second coat, you can set your project in an area to dry for 24 hours. Once you let your project dry for 24 hours, you are ready to begin playing with it once it is dry to the touch. So it should look like this, and when you touch it, no paint should come off on your fingers. You're going to need some red food coloring, some vinegar, 
some baking soda and then I used a sheet of laminated paper as a funnel I just taped it so that I can be able to pour in the baking soda at the top of the volcano I'm gonna start off by pouring some red food coloring in the center of the volcano next I'm gonna use my funnel and pour some baking soda into the middle of the volcano just gonna pour a good amount so that I can make this volcano explode a few times then I'm gonna put some more red food coloring in there now we are ready for the explosion we're gonna start by pouring in the vinegar slowly work somewhere where you can make a mess because this is about to explode <laughs> 